the new Parkway Theater, where good food, diverse entertainment, and community create a place for everyone. For showtimes and special events, check out www.thenewparkway.com. You are listening to High School of Avenue, where real talk is our vernacular. Pedro, what do you think about his values about the greatest thing a woman can do is be a homemaker? It is. <laughs> All right, in other news. <laughs> you know Pedro's coming with that. <laughs> I mean, shoot, look at my wife. My wife go to work. Sometimes she thinks she the boss. She thinks she wear the pants. I just yelled at her today, telling me to get the laundry out the back, put it on the couch so she can fold the clothes. No, you get the laundry out the back, you fold the clothes, while I lay up here and drink this beer. God damn it. And uh, other news, is there any other? Make, uh, what's make up? me a sandwich, bitch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> got a, just got out of character, sorry. I don't represent or agree with anything Pedro says. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the High School Five Hundred Podcast. You can catch us at High School Five Hundred on the Instagram, the YouTube, and on the Twitter at the Hawker Sister. And we are here with. Guess I'm coming at you faster than this summertime in the hood and all this stuff. The uh, we got we got the, the, oh, it's AG3. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. We got the we got the motorcycles. We got people outside yelling. We got all things happening outside these windows today. There you go. It sounds like a party is happening. A little festival on your block. It sound like it. And the sad part, none. Hopefully they will uh, not be like your soundbite for much longer. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be having a hellacious summer. Uh, here's your soundbite, Aaron. Anyone remember the guy that was fired for the Kobe Bryant joke? Like Kobe Bryant at a hotel in Colorado. He's unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because we were off last week, I have double the amount of uh, soundbites for you. So uh, here's another one, uh, Aaron. All right. This message is for the president of the United States of America, Mr. Joe Biden. Sir, can you ask Kamala Harris if she'll send me a picture of her feet? God damn. You know, it's funny, Jared, when you wasn't online, me and Pedro were just talking about do prisoners, prisoners getting weed in prison now. <laughs> right? We're that was a uh, Idaho Department of Correction uh, v mail or voice uh, video message uh, from a Branson Pardoon. God, I miss the old school days of incarceration. <laughs> Aaron wants, wants the old school prison system back. What is it you require of an indentured servant? A what? Uh, a helper. Oh, well, cigarettes. Lots of cigarettes. Give me a specific number, Buddha. How many cigarettes? Give me a 15 box. We don't have that no more. Now we have people, they getting drugs. Well, they were getting drugs back then, but, not, but you know, they were getting the low quality. They were, you you they mad because they, they, they getting uh, a bunch of extra shit now. Now they getting snacks. They getting everything, man. Cooking meat. Hey, getting man. Foods, prisoners. Getting video conferences and phones. What? what, what? Yeah, prisoners mm -hmm. are uh, our people still, so we got to give them some rights. I'm not, I'm not saying take away their human rights. What you get in jail should be determined by what you did but you shouldn't get no those uh fancy spicy korean pack of noodles you should just get maruchan uh, exactly you shouldn't even you should be getting some version you should be getting the 99 cent store version of top ramen uh, a maruchan i wanted dessert for 15 years <laughs> well it's better maruchan or top ramen are they the same uh they both are pretty awful i i always enjoy maruchan no, slightly better you know i like maruchan especially the shrimp flavor maruchan <laughs> that little small shrimp that had to get reconstituted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had the little, two little shrimps and, uh, sitting but, but on the top. <laughs> first for you, because it, you warmed up in the microwave. I, I didn't warm it up too much. But that styrofoam cup, you know you got all kind of carcinogens in it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know they changed their cups over to paper now. So, <laughs> no, finally. Well, but see, I was lucky, Jared, that like I didn't have a microwave in college and, and I didn't eat maruchan and top ramen in college either. I mm -hmm. just I just did. I just went hungry. Right. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I would walk to McDonald's because it was still cheap. But <laughs> my maruchan, when I made maruchan when I was growing up, I always boiled water. I never put it in the microwave. He a man. And we are here with. 
Uh, yeah, Captain P Funk. Y'all know a nigga. Um, <laughs> look, stop giving big women on Instagram self esteem. Tell us, stop it. I need a, I need an out. I need an out. So big women can be an out, but y'all giving them way too much self esteem. Yeah, it's getting hard for Pedro to holler at big women in the streets these days, y'all. Yeah, they got people <laughs> liking all kind of pictures just no man no go back to the skinny broads fellas all right well here's the sound by pedro uh this is from uh kathy haku the governor of new york young black kids growing up in the bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is <laughs> they even know what the word is. i look i ain't spent too much time in the bronx but i know i guess they still burning cars out there i only know the bronx from rumble in the bronx with jackie chan so that's a skewed uh lens to have on it there's a meme to that video where a guy acting like a gorilla. I believe I yeah, saw m- moving around a damn uh, computer like he don't know what yeah. to do with it. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, oh, Pedro, here's your second sound bite. Uh, your favorite pastor, or second favorite pastor, uh, uh, what's his name again? The cussing yes, pastor? Thaddeus Matthews. Mr. Thaddeus Matthews has a message for you. Uh, it's pretty on brand with all his other messages. I never thought that I'd get to the place that I just didn't like niggas no more. You motherfuckers, you new niggas, fuck you. If you want to stay alive in Memphis, do like the white peoples. Stay away from a goddamn nigga. <laughs> man, I, I, you know, I ain't, I'm kind of not mad at that, man, because... I mean, man, you see all the killing. All the killing in Memphis, man. They just out there. You can't... He's supposed to be hoping hope against it. He's supposed to be yelling, "Nice, supposed to be the caster, Pedro." And he's giving up hope, like me. I give it. I'm giving up hope and faith. Pray, why Jesus? God damn. He's seeing it. He's seeing it act. First of all, he's too busy chasing. You know what? On the uh, on the internet, he chases a lot of pussy on the internet. That is Matthew. Mm-hmm. He's. He, I think sometimes he used that pulpit to get these holes, but the game is shame talking about it. But the other parts. Is he's seeing stuff happen live in his city? He's trying to help. This dude even got to think he has a casket or a casket company that's making it affordable for people to bury their loved ones because there's so much depth in you know those urban communities. Man, they they kill people for no reason. It's unfortunate the 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 crime rate and the the violent crime rate in in many large places, uh, but. You know, it's 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 not just niggas' faults. <laughs> well, I guess I guess no remember. We, uh, we, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's unfortunate though that uh, that it's uh, it's something that is uh, highly highly um, enabled through social cultural norms. Um, that's that's where it gets problematic, <laughs> and that perception. You know, only magnifies it because now they got a tool to embolden it through rap music, current day, the last 20 years of rap music. So, and my name is Jared, aka DJ Art, with two T's for a double dose that tink tink. The D is on, so it's just chart. Also, uh, I don't, I don't dislike rap music. I don't want to make it seem like I'm blaming rap music for inner city woes. I'm just saying it's a tool to enhance or uh, per- help perpetuate certain uh, urban or, um, Negro dilemmas in this world. Certain ones. Here's my sound bite. What the world does to you is the world does it to you long enough and effectively enough. You begin to do it to yourself. You become a collaborator, an accomplice of your own murderers, because you believe the same things they do. They think it's important to be white, and you think it's important to be white. They think it's shameful to be black, and you think it's shameful to be black. And you have no corroboration around you of any other sense of life. You know, all those corroborations which are around you are, in terms of the white majority standards, so deplorable, they frighten you to death. You don't eat watermelon. No, you get so rigid you can't dance. You know, you can hardly move by the time you're 14. You know, you're always scrubbed and shining. You know, a parody of God knows what, because you know, no white person has ever been, you know, as clean as, <laughs> as, clean as you have been, been forced to become. And, you know, and you've got to somehow to begin to break out of all of that, 
and try to become yourself. I know AG3 is one Negro that will not is not ashamed to eat watermelon, though. <laughs> oh, man, the one I got wasn't even that good, man. <laughs> Uh, shout out to James Baldwin. Just because Aaron's getting mad at me about being all high and mighty and, you know, having articulate brothers like James Baldwin be my soundbite <laughs> because, you know, we got to bring some levity to the show. Uh, I got an ignorant one for me. Here it goes. White woman, you know, waits 40 and 50 years to tell on a black man who sexually abused him. They going to the cops that same night. Yeah, you don't wait yeah. 40 years because yeah. he didn't take advantage of him. But because him and Camille Cosby didn't want to let the white oil company drill under their house in Massachusetts, they decided to bankrupt him through the courts with the sexual allegations to eventually force him to sell the house so the oil company could get the oil. Bill Cosby went to jail for oil. R. Kelly in jail because he didn't want to give a certain music company his masters. Whitney Houston is dead because she was going to order an audit on her earnings. She wanted her publishing back and she wanted her masters back. Michael Jackson is dead because he didn't want to give the Beatles catalog back. Prince is dead because he didn't want to give his unpublished music to a certain music company. None of this is happening for the reason they tell you. Yeah. This is about power and control of resources. Now, thank you, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. I believe him. Conspiracy, brother. Goodwill hunting, meaning I'm hunting niggas. Thank you, Dr. Umar Johnson, because you just broke Jared's streak of having good brothers uh, following his intro. Good, <laughs> articulate, smart brothers. They use articulate and smart sounding. What are you talking about? I'm just saying, there might be a lot more to what what's going on in some of these people's, you know, unfortunate deaths. I don't think it's just pharmaceutical companies prescribing too strong of drugs and you know people having you know saying pain addiction and other drug addiction habits you know that that could be part of it but i, I think it's something nefarious going on guys whitney would have never od'd in my wildest dreams first of all let's get one thing straight crack is cheap i make too much money to ever smoke crack let's get that straight okay we don't do crack we don't do that crack is whack you know they uh, framed Whitney Houston because uh, <laughs> she 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 had the monopoly on crack pipes. You smoke crack, don't you? <laughs> the Bidens were trying to get in on that game, and she wouldn't let them get the patent. I don't know much about crack, but it seems like a lot of crack. It seems like uh, a real lot of crack. <laughs> I heard she got drowned by the maids in that uh, hotel because they saw how they're gonna have to clean that bathroom. <laughs> Might as well just kill this bitch, get the police in here, do a preliminary cleanup, and <laughs> yeah. then we'll do the rest. <laughs> do the rest. Come on. Damn that back. That's cool, buddy. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, the R. Kelly part is the least real. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> there is no evidence otherwise that states R. Kelly did nothing wrong. <laughs> Jesus. I don't see nothing wrong. Prince surprised me, though. I didn't think he was necessarily, you know, uh, I don't know how he died. He could have been poisoned or something. You know? He was the same way. He was uh, all the all that pain medication. Yeah, yeah. All them years of hooping and performing in high heel boots. Performing <laughs> doing the splits in high heel boots. <laughs> Not without he, using your hands from the split. He was walking like OJ at the end. Doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. In news this week, in news, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are set to debate twice. But there is a very real concern that Donald Trump uh, has for this debate. He's concerned about DEDs and Joe Biden using them. Uh, you might wonder what those are. Those are the debate versions of PEDs. And he wants Biden drug tested before he enters the Coliseum with him. Here's what he had to say. No, I have fake tappers. The, uh, they said, I just want to debate this guy, but you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to demand a drug test too, by the way. I am. No, I really am. I don't want him coming in like the state of the union. He was high as a kite. <laughs> it, it, it is true. <laughs> Every old person get drugs given to him, Pedro, by that doctor. Yeah, you know. Bro, he, had, he, had, he just he got had, more. He just got. I, I see, hey, he a little. He older than my parents. My parents in the eighties, and I see how much they have to take to stay alive. So I can only imagine. <laughs> you hear all the pills going in the morning. Your parents? How about us? 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I'm going to be taking more than them if I make it that age. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to be taking so many pills. I ain't going to have no room in my stomach for food. Aaron, it's because Trump. you got Trump that liberal diet. Me. I'm going to be like, man, I don't need no zip it because ain't no ain't no room in my stomach for food. There's too many pills in there. You need to get back to a simple diet, like Dr. Sebi said, watermelon and deer meat. That's all you need, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd still be, yeah, that diet, man. That diet, that diet sound like I, I'd be up all night, too. Do any of y'all know what a BBC is? All right. Well, uh, are you guys excited for these debates? And are you concerned about Joe Biden having an unfair advantage because he is using DEDs? <laughs> debate so, uh, enhancing drugs. I need to know what these debate enhancing drugs are. Are they, are they Adderall? What is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess his body can handle Adderall. So yeah, I don't know. He, he take a little bump of some Adderall. Just sniff a little bit of it. He'll be up. He'll be good. <laughs> he said he was high as a kite. That's hilarious, man. He was that, high as a kite. <laughs> you know what? I want Trump to run for office every year. I don't want him to win, but I want him to run for office every year. That would be well. It'd be really scary because he just keep upping the ante on crazy shit that he's wanting to do or says but that's what i said i think he's like right there it just seems like he's just riffing he's just like this is like a little like comedy set and i think the majority of his speeches are him just having just the open mic session where like and people it's just weird because people take him seriously and also then the, the other end of people who are like he's just joking he's not he, he doesn't mean that he's just saying that because he's, he's a funny guy and and that's how that's a sense of humor you know he's got real he's got real values he's got real uh, policy he's gonna do and he just he just doesn't let anybody uh you know talk shit to him and you know that kind of vibe and i'm just like oh lord TikTok got i've been seeing a lot on TikTok. Uh, some of these people debating having their little TikTok forums debating arguing with each other uh pedro are you worried about the deds affecting are giving Biden an unfair advantage. Yeah, because it's got to be a robot. It's something they're giving him uh, some uppers. They're giving him uppers. They're giving him smelling salts before a debate. Because you know right after those debates, he falls out and goes to sleep. Matter of fact, they put him in the coffin and put him on Air Force One and get him back to uh, the house. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a, he travels in a, in a hyperbaric coffin. <laughs> <laughs> it just shoots straight pure oxygen to him. <laughs> Breaking news. We got a new, we'll have a new NBA champion. We'll have a new NBA and we'll get to that momentarily. But in other news, <laughs> in other news, Miles Reed didn't even get drafted. Yep. See, um, needing virtual fetalization. Well, fuck that shit. It might get outlawed anyways, but you don't need that. All you need is a little, oh, 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 Zampic. And you will get pregnant. Here's a video. Hey, what? Be careful. Everybody's getting pregnant on Ozempic now. This is absolutely true. It's thought that these injectable weight loss medications like Wagovi or Ozempic or Zepbound and Manjaro are affecting the efficacy and absorption of oral contraceptive medications. And they're also improving fertility in women with PCOS. And so that's why I have a 53-year-old patient who is now pregnant with twins. Yeah, apparently Ozempic get you fertile. <laughs> Look like Pedro better be worried about them big women that he trying to hook up with. <laughs> yeah, Pedro, man, they they on Ozempic trying to trying to slim down a little bit, Pedro. You might be in trouble. They might be getting pregnant. <laughs> oh, oh, they had to worry about that. I can't even get hard. Shouldn't be called Black Rose. It should be called Big Piece of Black Dog Shit. That's what it should be called. Not even the hard, dried up dog shit for seven days. It's the soft dog shit. It's like baby shit <laughs> oh my God. did i speak out loud <laughs> did i say that internal monologue no. <laughs> out loud no, that's the king of pedro king of eternal monologue this shit should be said out loud <laughs> <laughs> the internal monologue that will offend you <laughs> or himself <laughs> Oh well, yeah. So, so these shots are doing wonders in these in, in people. It should, I'm a wonder than we thought. I'm on a shot too. Yeah. So apparently, doctors are starting to prescribe uh, these off-label Ozempics um, for women who have PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. It's a hormonal disorder that is leading that is the leading cause of infertility in uh, per Bloomberg. Per Bloomberg, yeah. So yeah, man, 
You guys uh, ready to start seeing those Ozempic babies pop out? <laughs> what What's the worst that can happen to a baby birth by Ozempic uh, uh, enhancement? Santa coming out healthy. Uh, what What's the worst? Because it sounds like, like you said, man, if you get these 53-year-old people having babies, it sounds like at least they'll they have some parents that settle down, not full of drama, and know what they are, where they are in life. Exactly. They, they, might, they might not be around for them for college and post college, but at least they they gonna raise them good. Yeah, man, I gave somebody a, a lot of credit for being a parent, and I'm gonna have to take all that back. This is strange, man. He, this science, man. Sometimes you just it seems like people are just taking it too far. You got to be careful with certain drugs. Well, my old lady's a uh, pharmacy tech. And then I got a son that's a uh, practicing nurse practitioner. So we do talk a lot about these drugs and, and the wonders of them. You just got to be careful. My son's like conscious of what he gives his kids. Mm. He's got, you know, he's really conscious about that. Mm. Because it's yeah, you see stuff, you know, you talk about you see stuff at the medical level that you know it concerns him, but this is weird though, man. It's like like me and Aaron, we all need drugs. Aaron's on drugs because I think he takes uh Travato. <laughs> I'm worried that you know these kids might, you know, just be the most, you know, skinny fit slim people you know ever, on, or, or they just gonna, you gonna come out with a bunch yeah. of like slim babies i don't think the drug if <laughs> they can't they can't hold no baby now. fat they're gonna have their beach body ready when they come out you know i'm taking travada and blue chews at the same time matter of fact speaking about uh potential uh sponsors uh truvada or blue chew or hymns uh, i just saw a uh, lid of dude wipes uh, out by my car the other day uh, on on the street so uh shout out to shout out to dude wipes sponsorship yeah. come on our show dude wipes um all right well uh in other news uh according to this TikToker, japan might just be where ag3 needs to end up apparently japan loves them and need them some more bbc's and japan needs you Japan is calling specifically for black men. I know you are saying why, Tasha. They say they need babies, and black men tend to make a lot of them. After South Korea proposed last week $75,000 per baby that a family has, Japan is in desperate need, okay? And they are calling all black men, specifically immigrants, um, to come and impregnate their women so that they can save their dying population. I don't understand because, you know, black men were once and still is on the inner side, side of the line, which means their lives, I mean, what, what are you going to guarantee us if we send our men over there to help save you? Could you imagine? Think about this. After everything they put us through, everything, y'all trying to take these men out. Now you need them to repopulate the earth? The United States is responsible for what's going on over there in Japan. Why should we be held responsible? And get this, they ain't even paying no money to do it. They're just saying, please, please, black men, immigrants, please come have babies without women. <laughs> now, if they paid for it, I would go over there. And my wife would approve it. Before y'all even start talking, you better <laughs> believe she would prove it. As soon as they start paying, I'm going. She said they was gonna pay seventy. That's Tasha K. Actually, that was that was, that was Korea that's paying. Oh, Korea's paying. Korea's paying. That's why she said she had thought of paying. Yeah, shout out to my homeboy Dark Gemini. Oh. He just he just made a meme about this, Jared. So you're late. Oh, sorry. Yeah, both, both of them, both countries yeah, are having the lowest birth rates of like all time, man. They they really in trouble. Both Korea, South Korea, and Japan. Oh, dang. Well, my my problem with my wife, she would want the baby. <laughs> <laughs> you go get a pregnant, have her had the baby, bring it back. <laughs> Pedro will go over there once they once they start paying. Aaron, would you go over there if they were paying or just for free? Yeah, Aaron go over there for a happy meal in his next month, Genuvia. <laughs> I'll go over there for an old Nintendo cartridge and a, and a Nintendo DS game. Come on. I'll go over there for a bowl of rice. 
and a cup of warm sake. I'll go over there and help him out for two thousand dollars, five thousand. You know, I, I'm willing to pay that much to go over there. <laughs> We're drinking every protein shake from between here and there. In other news, Family Matter star Darius McCrary was trending going, this week. He ain't well, the only one. Just, I just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. <laughs> well, Darius McCrary, who played Eddie on Family Matters, recorded an OnlyFans video with Sydney Starr, who happens to be a transgender star. I don't want to see the video, please. Here's the teaser video. <laughs> All I'm going to say, this this makes me feel good that I never went to Pedro's church. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I guess we didn't pray for him hard enough. What is all this, Jared? We can't find He, he do too much. <laughs> he says a teaser video. I'm seeing Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Drake. Too much internet. Black Brothers for Trump. Oh, Keith Sweat. <laughs> Keith Sweat. Uh, Keith Sweat got better knees than Genuine. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say. What, Keith Sweat, I, I, Keith Keith Sweat was in the news me. for uh, showing that them old knees can still grind. Not so well, though. Come on, baby. I can't do it. Turn it down a little bit, Jerry. You just start. Your recipe shout out to my brother. He used to love Key Sweat concert because he was guaranteed to get him some. The women love him, so Key Sweat, boy. <laughs> he getting to that old nigga stage. <laughs> he had that look on his face while he's singing. <laughs> Old nigga that used to have a lot of swagger. He's like, I still got it. <laughs> Shout out to Keith Sweat. Come on our show. <laughs> what was the story you were talking about? You was talking about the Darius McCoy and that trans model or Instagram model that was caught doing a regular. God help us. Uh, okay. I'm going with chicks with sticks, huh? Okay. <laughs> Just everybody irregular. Who would ever thought? Who would thought that Steve Urkyle would be the only one to do regular? <laughs> Got him a wholesome, a wholesome white woman. <laughs> He's the only one doing regular. Sydney Star had this to say: In business, we have a whole show on the way. Sydney Star, who Jared follows music. on all platforms. Let him know. This is a like, business meeting. I feel like Blueface right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Blue, Blue I'm your Krishan Rod. Just, just go get a fucking tooth with my your, face on it. I'm your Krishan Rod. Just go get a Krishan <laughs> Rock and Blueface, here we come. No. Wait, they got back together. No. That's not That's not what we're trying to do. That's not. We, we're money makers. All right, he's like, no, we ain't, we ain't actually going out. I'm just, we just fucking for money. <laughs> Wait a minute, he didn't say that, did he? Yeah, he said this is a business decision. He said we ain't doing. She said you gonna be like Christian Rock and Blueface, like that, that, that whole level of. Darius McRae, he was fighting punch each other. <laughs> I like to apologize for Darius McRae right now. This is this is our fault. A Blaze Ministry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize to Pastor Gene. It ain't yeah. his fault. It ain't his fault. No, no, no. We didn't pray enough. I thought we we <laughs> prayed in tongues for hours with this man, okay? And I thought if the change was coming, get him off them drugs, get him off that, that Hollywood high, get him off the sex and women. And no, we done prayed this man into a chicks with <laughs> sticks. We prayed him into chicks with sticks. And I apologize. The business decision. Maybe he took he gave you guys so much money. <laughs> I don't know what he put in that, that uh, collection plate that night, but I, I do I do remember Pastor Joe getting a Lincoln Town car afterwards. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my pastor. No, he did that town car. I paid for that. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what to say. All I know is that uh Pedro, how would you classify this OnlyFans uh, video they they probably filmed? How would I classify it? Irregular? 
I'm really sad for the man. It seems like it wasn't he. Jazz, I thought his career was turning around. Because uh, uh, the most jazz uh, on the Transformers, right? Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, he yeah, played yeah, jazz. He jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah he he didn't have any lines, but he was jazz. Looked like he was didn't he was something. He did something else in the cartoon uh, era thing. So I thought he was turning his life around. Yeah, you are. You're right. He was jazz in the cartoon too. Yeah, the last oh, thing yes, I saw him in was um was a, a John Carpenter's uh, Vampires, Dilo de los Muertos, or whatever that one was in Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, even I didn't see that. Uh, that was like 20 years ago down there. I was like, Eddie was like, I was on top of go, dude. I actually <laughs> seen him. I thought he was in a lifetime, some of them lifetime movies. No, he was no way in a lifetime. Nope. You know, maybe man. maybe it was a Tubi movie. <laughs> it could have been Tubi. But it was, it probably was Tubi. Just... There's a big difference between Tubi and Lifetime. I, I'm happy he upgraded to OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we didn't pray enough. We didn't pray hard enough for you, bro. Tubi to leave it <laughs> <laughs> and the storylines are way more bro, convincing. Man. I apologize to that, bro. I, I feel like if I prayed in, did you bully prayed, him as a as a kid? Paige? He's older than us. I don't know how. Oh no, he's same age. Wow, no, it's the same age. He's born yeah. a day after me. I maybe this was his birthday present. I I just you know I feel like if I prayed an extra fifteen minutes in tongues, everything would have been okay. And I didn't pray hard enough. You Father, forgive hard. me. Darius uh, McCray, forgive me. Uh, Reginald Bell Johnson, you know what you did with Diddy. God <laughs> forgives you. <laughs> Shout out sponsorship to all those name drops. Pedro, just kidding. Allegedly. <laughs> well, uh, in other news, scathing video came out this week of Diddy accosting and assaulting and abusing his former girlfriend, uh, uh, Cassie Santana. Was that what that was? It? Cassie? Cassie Ventura, dude. Cassie Santana Ventura. Cassie Ventura. Where you get Santana from? I don't know. I just, it's, I, I can't remember all the reading I done read of a regular internet this week. So, uh, well, anyways, video shows Diddy dragging uh, Sant uh, Ventura. <laughs> Santana again. Ventura uh, from getting on an elevator, dragging her towards the hallway. Um, after she falls to the ground, he kicks her multiple times, at least three, I believe, and then drags her a little bit further into the hallway before he walks back to the room and comes back piping mad and drags her into another corner by the elevators and throws a face at her. Yeah, you know you got issues, man. You did he do it? Him? Or did he not? <laughs> I didn't see the part where he threw a vase. He threw a vase at her. He's sitting that in the chair. The end. Yeah, at the yeah. end, he threw a vase. My question well, is... I, thought, I didn't know he threw, I thought he threw the vase at the wall. He threw it at her. Well, he threw her over to the side of the wall where he threw... Where she threw was at. It. Yeah, he threw it towards her. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You yeah. can't see it. Yeah, you don't see a striker from the video I saw, but, yeah, she's in the area that he throws it at, so he, you could assume that he was throwing it at her. He might have... Tried to miss her intentionally. That, that was that was I, crazy. My wife cheated on me. I ain't never hit her like that. <laughs> she did that to you when you was cheating, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it dragged Pedro oh, ass down the hallway. Yeah. Um. This seems to confirm many of the things that uh, have come out in recent year about Diddy and his behavior towards women. Um. Yeah. So. Um. You know. Um. Did he do it, or did he not? You know he apologized today, right? I saw that. Diddy came out with an apology video where he seemed very upset so, with himself and said that he did not like the person he was in that video, and he was disgusted and ashamed of it. He only likes the person he is when he was having sex with man. <laughs> Come on. Uh, not that. He did, he did not mean to degrade women. He only wanted to de degrade Reginald Bill Johnson. Allegedly. Because he'd like to see what niggas like doing for money. I might have to agree, because if y'all seen Reginald Bell Johnson lately, he's he had played a gay character in a movie. He's really nice and sweet to everybody. And it looks like he's searching for BBC. Mm -hmm. He's just really nice around black man. And it just I'm like, this is America's father. The only thing to get me, Jared, is that. I feel like there's gonna be the same brothers who thought that 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 soundbite 
of him and Meek Mill was real, probably gonna think this is fake. Well, no, did he admit it to it with his apology? He apologized. He said he even suck, uh, sucked. I didn't even say that. He uh, sought out. <laughs> no, he's so, right. Therapy. He sucked the therapist off. <laughs> And, and sucked off a rehab specialist. <laughs> did he do it? <laughs> or did he not? This is actually not a funny matter, though. But, um, yeah. He, did, did he? Did he is done. He's going to be done for a while now. Yeah, this video coming out only, only further exposes um, his behavior. And uh, it's all crumbling around him. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see where Diddy ends up in the next few years. Is he gonna be in jail uh, for anything? You know, is he going to prison potentially, or is he gonna fade into anonymity and kind of be blacklisted? But still, you know, he's got his money, he still got assets, and you know, he'll he'll live an OJ lifestyle at the end or something like that. But uh, I ain't gonna say nothing. It's hard enough said by if you've seen the video. It's unfortunate, really disgusting, you know, terrible behavior egregious behavior i was gonna make a joke off something but then i just forgot it so i'm just gonna leave it at that yeah you got this much power man i, I don't <sighs> is is diddy a gemini as as the people that that uh talk about the astronomy is he a gemini pedro why don't you know what that'd be a funny segment pedro we get you to do your own like little like um, astrological sign readings and you, you know, saying just do like a weekly update on a certain astrological sign and how that's going to translate into their life. I, I'm not good with astronomy, but I'm good with skin color. <laughs> oh, we do uh, pigmentation astrology. Yes. I <laughs> that's a dark nigga. They going to do something ignorant. <laughs> right. That's a dark and, nigga. And he got like you. <laughs> I can also tell how you're going to act the size of your bottom lip. <laughs> You got a wide nose or a big bottom lip. I know it's a lot of trouble coming. Tell me he didn't just say that. Well, yeah, if y'all want to hear uh, some uh, Negro astrological readings based on uh, physical and facial features, uh, Pedro's got you, got you hooked up. He got you. you know nothing about astronomy. I think astronomy is bullshit. Astrology. I watch, astrology. Uh, astrology, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying astronomy, man. It, 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 all that pastrami, I don't know nothing about it. Go ahead and give me a nice <laughs> moment for that. This magic moment. Uh, but I can I can tell you I know I know a nigga born every month. <laughs> uh, you stupid. I know a hoe that was born every month. In sports news, it was a Sunday full of game sevens. The Indiana Pacers went into New York and defeated the hobbled, depleted, disabled New York Knicks in a game seven. And the Minnesota Timberwolves went into Mile High Denver 5206. Is that the number they had on their jersey today? Uh, 5206, it's something like that. Yes, yeah, something like that. 5602. It says how many feet above sea level. Maybe it's 5602 because it's 5,600 feet is a mile. Uh, anyways, Minnesota Timberwolves, led by Anthony De Anthony Edwards, went in and defeated with a massive third quarter comeback. The Denver Nuggets in a game seven on the road. So two road teams won their game sevens and are headed to their respective conference finals. All right, what happened with the Knicks Pacers? What was, what? yeah, I want to know what, what happened in that game and what did you guys see? You know, Pacers came out running. That's what I saw. They came out running. They did what they did all year, and that was push the pace. New York logged a lot of minutes. They didn't have a deep bench to go to, and they just came out running from the get-go. And then Pascal Siakam, he kind of held serve in the half-court form, especially early on in the game. And the crowd got into it. Halliburton was fired up, talking crap to the crowd, and then he just went on fire after that, man. He was just hitting, and they actually played great defense. I mean, a little bit. De Vincenzo had 39, but that, you know, most of it, a lot. Of, I would say he got a legit 30, then at least nine was like mop-up time. Pedro, what did you see? What I've seen is these guys getting ran into the ground. Now, there was a list of coaches, like, that players didn't want to play for. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom Thibodeau was at the top. Now, I respect Tom Thibodeau. I think he's a great defensive mind. He's a great energy coach. I, I can see people wanting to run through the wall for him. Like Kobe Bryant, that was one of his favorite people. But saying that, it doesn't seem like 
either either the the bench of New York, the guy the guys at the back of the bench. He's got to find out a way to get to him. If you know what I mean, he's got to he's got to develop those players. He seems like he always leans on his top players the most, and you see it wears them to the ground. Yeah, but nobody uses that back of the bench can play off. They, every they don't. Both Denver, and Minnesota only had only played eight players today. Right. Most of them play eight players. The problem is, think about it. They had three of their top players gone, man. Right. Right. They have no Julius Randle because he ran him to the ground. No, no, Julius Randle hurt. For, he didn't mess up his shoulder. He, he hurt his shoulder. Forward. He dislocated he his shoulder. His yeah, shoulder. He ran, yeah, yeah because that was, it, that was it, a random crown. It got like because in practice, Tom Thibodeau suplexed him. <laughs> no, he did in the game. I remember watched the game yeah. where he did it. And saw he, it. Yeah, no, I, I do, I do, I, I do know about how Wait, players, play, players were, you know, are wary of playing under Tom Thibodeau because he does play, play, he does play certain players massive minutes. Josh Hart is a example of that, but like they were shorthanded for a lot of this yeah. playoffs. So like I think and the injuries, I, I, I think the little... injuries uh, hurt him, but I also think like you know you you can't count on injured players so if you know guys are have been dealing with injuries you got to like really like start trying to i guess lean on more of that extra bench to try and get them hopefully some meaningful minutes well, that's so what i'm saying they in. went into the they went into the end of the season knowing they not have they don't have julius Randle. they had a hampered uh robinson going into the postseason knowing that they should have been like hey we got to get player e on the end of the bench some time we got to get player f at the end of the at the end of the bench some time because we hurt just to get up there and, you know, make some stop gaps because when they, when they did put those players in, they looked stupid as hell. They looked like they had no clue what was going on. It was fouling too much. And mm. it was like, you can't lean on anybody. I, I, I mean, I understand this is the NBA. You're going to have a bunch of trash players at the end of the bench and you don't play your players, but going into the playoffs, they've known they had these, these illnesses. Mm-hmm. And even though what I think, uh, what's his name, Ebenobi? I think he was dealing with his hamstring soreness before the yeah, now he was banged up heading into the playoffs. He had heading into the playoffs, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, man, you gotta play Burke a little more, you know, try to balance those numbers out. That, that's what he yeah. does a bad job at still. If you ask me, it's just too much, too many heavy minutes on his starters when yeah. you know that they're ailing. I mean, Jether Brusson had his finger wrapped. Yeah, and other injury. news that happened in the in the fourth quarter or near the end of the third, Jalen Brunson went to the locker room with an injured hand and uh, revealed he had a fracture in his hand, and so he was done for the day. So basically, that whole fourth quarter, they played without him, and it was it, it, he was struggling that day. I think you know I'll give but, Indiana some credit. Indiana is is a team that they were one of the highest scoring, if not the highest scoring team. They have they play uh, they play a pretty good ball movement type type of play. They get guys. They, they seem to have the Knicks kind of stretched out the way they were setting off ball screens, moving off the ball a little bit more than most offenses you watch. And so they had moving off the ball. It's pulling the the, the centers up higher because you got these guys setting back screens sometimes on the ball, but a lot of times away from the ball. I think that, that was like super, well, super good. And it just exposed the Knicks for being shorthanded. And you had guys like who were Aaron's, already playing who are undersized having like to. Aaron um, said, Aaron said this. Tyrese Holly Berry. <laughs> is the reason he's tight he's tight that they, yeah is. they 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 got some players man they got I don't some know players. i've been seeing his I, praises before the draft i, I, I want to uh give credit to I, I was talking about the Knicks. let me give us a little bit of credit to uh the pacers because they yeah. knew they knew what they was going against so they 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 sped up the pace yeah the pacers it, paced <laughs> they sped yeah. up the pace. It's like okay these fools is hurt this let's get these quick shots off. Let's get uh spicy P going real fast. Let's get this get these guys in the middle. Let's get these open shots. Take the take the shots quick. And they put up a lot of shots and it just went in. You know. Yeah. With who they yeah. got, they would be they, it'll be fun to see. I think I think they have a pretty good shot against Boston, actually, if you look at it. Um I say Boston in six, but yeah. I, mean, I think really Boston's good. gonna be tough, but they got they have they have some they have the right pieces because everybody they got pieces they got guys, yeah, and they got guys that can throw at you know Jalen Brown or Tatum. It's not like they're they have Siakam that can probably play him some. They got um uh, uh I don't know if you would have Halliburton out there, but they got uh, you right uh, High Smith who did a good job Smith, against Brunson. Smith, they were throwing yeah. a lot of different guys at Brunson too, and I, I thought what the Knicks were doing that was like really killing their offense when I was watching the game. It's like they refused to have anybody else bring the ball up, and Brunson was like having to bring the ball up. Uh, 
under constant pressure. And I'm like, why are you continuing yeah. to have him bring the ball up under constant pressure? And like, there's no offense being run. It was him. Then he'd either pass it away and he probably wouldn't get it back or, and he wasn't moving. He's was probably tired. They were worn down or he would try and get his own shot. But it was so much time out of the clock. I already eaten up that like, He's not getting great looks and, and, and the stuff that's coming out of it. He started playing like Luka Doncic. I was like, why are you playing like, don't do like Luka. You guys, what makes you, you got to lean into your Villanova ties, run that motion offense out on the perimeter and get the ball moving. And Brunson, what makes him special and unique is that he's good about moving off the ball and catching it. And I think that's where he can really get his advantage. Him bringing the ball up every time wasn't giving him an advantage. He's not quicker and more explosive and faster than everybody on the court. He's... He's just a really skilled player, so you got to lean into that. I don't know why they continue to have him do that. That was just wearing him down too, because they just kept putting dudes on him and had him working. And I'm like, this is fucking up your whole offense. You got to change this. Have somebody else bring that ball up, yeah, initiate the offense, I guess that's what allow that him to work off the ball. Him. Yeah, but Pacers look good, man. I think the Pacers. I, I'm calling the Pacers in five. <laughs> Damn five! <laughs> I don't think that's Porzingis five. is out games one and two for yes. sure. Might be out more than that. Who knows? We do know Boston could get a little three point happy. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I said Boston is six because they're going to have the advantage of the referees. Uh, the referees just tried to help Denver win this game. That's just, the one thing. He the just one thing tried that to NBA probably Denver don't want. Game. If David Stern was still around, we know the one thing the NBA wouldn't have. <laughs> Indiana Minnesota finals. <laughs> exactly. That's the finals I want to see. That'll be if that'll be the funnest one. I think. I think that's the two, you know, youngest, most talented teams that you could. You know, the way they're constructed, that would be a, a fun watch. It'd be interesting to see how they work off each other. Minnesota went into Denver and defeated Denver, uh, going away at the end. Um, what did you guys see in the the Denver series and uh, in, in that, that game seven where the visiting team was able to pull pull it out? One, I see the reason why Jamal Murray never made an all-star game because he's just inconsistent. He's one of those guys that could turn around and have like just flashes and a big night and a 40 point night and a 38 point night, but hit threes from all over the place and then, but just not consistent enough. I think when he, he's one of those guys that's pretty skilled and he's big for his skill set. So for him, he usually is bigger than some of the guards that are guarding him. So he's able to get his shot off and he's not harassed the same way. But when you throw bigger guys at him and make him really work, and those guys are like fighting through screens and staying on him instead of allow, allowing that soft fall off the screen and then let do, let him kind of like either pull up or create more space to then get the shot he wants or basically get a one-on-one that he wants. When you're doing that, he's not he's not like the greatest driving. So, so it's almost like you'd rather have him drive to the hoop. Yes. Um, then yeah, let him get the much space. Athletic ability. Yeah. So I think that that's something that I, you know, it looked like Minnesota was able to affect and slow him down in some of the, some of the game I saw where they were really fighting over some of the screens and they weren't just, you know, succumbing to the, to the switch and even their switch when they switched on to Nas Reed or Gobert, those guys are still uh, athletic enough to still challenge his shot. So it wasn't, it wasn't like getting a crazy great advantage necessarily either. Michael Porter show he can, he's inconsistent. He's, he scored single digits on the last four games. He was worried about his brother. He was trying to hit the side. He's trying to hit that side which piece brother? of the backboard. Which, which brother he worried about? It doesn't matter. It, each quarter he chooses a different one. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I mean, was he worried about his sister too? Uh, shit. Yeah, so Michael. His sisters, the sisters might get hurt, but they fine. You know, the I was are going to jail, Pedro. I, I was hoping that they. <laughs> I was hoping that Denver would lose. I I didn't want to see Denver repeat, but there was a scenario in mind where I would be rooting for Denver to probably repeat. And so it's like if Denver plays Boston, I'd probably rather see Denver beat Boston. I don't want to see Boston win. Even though I like some of the players on Boston, I wouldn't be as mad if Boston won now. But um, I would definitely for sure like be mad, more mad if Boston won. I'd rather see Denver win that. But um, Pedro, what, what else did you notice in the the Denver series? Where uh, the Wolves went up 2-0 by winning two road games to go up 2-0. Look, they were going home looking like they might even dare sweep them. Denver you know, pulls out two games in Minnesota, flips the whole thing on his head. And then you had uh, Denver won the thir- third game, right? Yep. Denver mm-hmm. third game. Yep. Yeah, I, Denver's I, 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 up 3-2, and the Wolves had to pull out two wins, same way the Pacers did, to pull off the series. So, uh, well, yeah, what did you see, Pedro? Oh, I had, I think in this series, I had Denver in six. I had Denver in six, so I was wrong about that. But I like to, I get, I like to give a shout-out to Anthony Edwards. This is this is a real man here. He said uh, just so on the TNT show, 
Charles Barkley uh, was making a joke. I haven't been to Minnesota in probably like 20 years. It's with uh, uh, Charles Barkley quoted. Anthony Edwards said back, bring your ass. <laughs> so I, I'm liking this kid, man. It's, it's a lot of stuff he says, a lot of slick stuff. He, he talks, he, you know, he motivates his play. He's a leader, man. He's he got big cat who is older than him, by the way, by what, four or five years. He's he's trying to he's coaching that man up. He's uplifting his teammates. Conley older than him by 10 years. And he's telling him, it's like, shit, I don't want one shit for Conley. I want to win it for myself. I like what this kid that just like how he thinks and how he how he how he goes with confidence. That's how you need to go about life, you know. Yeah, here's the clip I think you're talking about, Pedro. It's an honor to watch you play. Okay. I have not been to Minnesota in probably 20 years. Bring your ass. <laughs> hey, hey, bring your ass. Can you just send me a list of good restaurants? We're going to be there for like five days. I want you to send me a list of some good Damn. restaurants, okay? They also showed on Twitter uh, Charles Barkley dancing at a Final Four in Minnesota not too long ago. <laughs> Only Charles Barkley saying I ain't been there. Oh, they, they, yeah, no, no, no. They just they just showed it on. I was wondering why it was. Uh, they just showed him dancing on TNT. Yeah, he was he's over here talking about he ain't been in Minnesota. <laughs> that was that was twenty twenty two when he was dancing at him. Goddamn Charles, dude. In other news, Jalen Brunson showed up like this. Come on, come on. And somebody put a picture of that's wrong. The hater report on Twitter. <laughs> Said Jalen Brunson showed up when the Knicks needed him most, and it's a picture of Andrew C. Caldwell with his hair wet. I'm not gay no more. <laughs> <laughs> I am delivered. He got delivered out that game. Yeah, no, I thought the Denver um, championship uh, machismo was going to bring him through um, at the end, especially after seeing him win those two games on the road and. I got this another uh another credit I gotta give to Bonnie Jones when he called the Twin Towers uh 14 feet of worthlessness or worthless 14 feet. Cause I them boys is goofy and Big Cat. Big Cat had a pretty decent game. Keep well, I mean Big Cat kept him in the game. The thing about what, 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 what your boy Rudy Gobert did in that fourth quarter. Yeah. It's a free throw. Goofy shots, but they went yeah, in. All went in. Hit all his free throws. He fell. Even you know, it wasn't even mad at him fouling out because he kept uh, joking for scoring. Getting the, he's sitting, seeing the basket go in easily. And Minnesota has the blueprint. I think us. Oh, I didn't say it on the show because we wasn't talking about it. We was off last week for Mother's Day. Shout out to all the mothers that want me to be their baby daddy. <laughs> um, but they got that's the blueprint. I made fun of them. I was everybody made fun of them. It's like, hey, what you doing trading for Rudy Gobert? But they seen what the Lakers did. It was like, shoot, this is how you beat Denver. You throw three big guys at them. That's mm -hmm. the only way you're gonna beat them. You gotta throw three big guys at them. You gotta match up. I and I've said this, all the all the champions, I said it, I did say this on the show. All the champions, including the Warriors, when they had the dynasty. Had some bruiser big dudes. Well, they had that, and they had length. It's just really, yeah. it's length. It just plays it's your length. favor. You know, the way you're able to attack the the hoop in the playoffs is different because you get yeah. the fouls can be, you know, oh, they could be good or bad, but you get more fouls probably. But then also um, how you can test on the perimeter is like one of those things where it's it just it gives you that little extra margin of error that you don't have when you're undersized. So when like Halliburton's sitting there and DiVincenzo played a great game, I'm, I give him credit for being out there. He's basically out there by himself though, you know, and Halliburton's like, dude, you're too small for me. Yeah, you're athletic. You can contest me times. You can challenge me. But like, he's like, I'm going to shoot over you and you're not going to stop me. And if you're late on me, I'm going to, I'm going to bust on you. And so basketball is a game. Like it's a game of skill. And like I said, the pendulum swung in the, that, that whole Jeff, uh, what is it? Uh, it was Maury, Daryl Maury and the sabermetrics and the, you know, warriors, you know, shooting lights out threes. It swung out on that perimeter game and, and it's been fun, but th the highest level, you know what I'm saying? In the NBA, it's, it's, it's gone back to that infatuation has died down and people are realizing, Oh yeah. Like, yeah, you still want to be able to shoot. You got to raise your shooting percentage, but you need length and athleticism and yeah, well, good basketball. That, I, like, decent enough. If you have good defensive IQ, 
uh, players, then then you can like really make some things happen because it's hard to have a guy that is just long and athletic and gives you a little offense but can't play D, don't do nothing on D. Like you can't have those guys. So like just any kind of semblance of defensive IQ and you have length and athleticism, then you can be an impact player, especially like in playoffs where you're able to like, you could be a body that they put on yeah. somebody and press somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because make them work. See, because you're going to see the, this, that same team technically four games straight. You mm -hmm. know all their tendencies, you know all their screens, you know all the, the basically know all their plays, you know yeah. all their back cuts. So only thing that can defeat that is size. Yeah. It's the only thing that can defeat that. So if you, you can go square to square, toe to toe with them, it makes it more difficult when you're trying to run your offensive sets. That's the problem. That's what happened to New York. New York was just out playing them with all the games that New York won. They were just out playing uh, Indiana. Um, Indiana kind of lighting the ass. Mm -hmm. But once, once you know, they got going, they, got, they picked up the pace. You can't catch up with them, you know. Yeah, they kind of figured it out. And, and that team was depleted. They were done. It was. Yeah. I looked at I was like, who the fuck is on there? Hardenstein, Achua, uh, McBride, DiVincenzo, uh, Alec Burks. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, these like that's not like there's some decent role players in there, but like this is what you're having to try and come back and win with right now, and that is not a winning recipe. Like you would need a miracle, and they couldn't stop. Yeah, what is it? Indiana shot seventy percent from the from the field as a team. So, like when that happens, even at halftime, they're like, it's not. They're not going to continue. It's going to drop. That was just insane. No, they kept it going. <laughs> Are we in the days of parody now in the NBA? I think so to some degree. I think we're well. Remember, we were talking about the changing of the guard. The there was an era in time where it's mainly the LeBron, especially the LeBron era. You know, it was Le LeBron, and then there was a couple like you know other great players. But it was LeBron versus whoever the other great team was going to be. And the Warriors had their little run, mm -hmm. and they were the best. And and LeBron was kind of slowly, slowly fading. And now I think he's faded enough to where he's not. He's not a, the, He's not the piece that can turn a, a team's entire franchise around and make him championship. They're not a championship team. They might be a playoff team, but he's not going to turn you into a championship team like he used to. But if you think about it, since 2019, we've had a we've had uh, yeah it's, it's, two it's, different teams be, in the finals each year. Yeah, it's going to be teams in the finals. New. Yeah, and, and and we had a, a new winner right every yeah. year. Yep, and that that's 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 kind of cool though. I think and the NBA hasn't had this since the 1970s. The 1970s only had, I think, the Knicks won it twice in the 70s. Yeah, I think they played in three finals though. The Bullets won one. Boston my won two in the finals, but they weren't like the same teams. They were totally two different teams. Lakers got one. Knicks got two. Seattle got one. The Supersonics. Yeah, are we entering this age of parody? Is Anthony Edwards the player that takes over? Does Tatum and Brown or Tatum, one of them, cement themselves as like now the guy they got to prove it, you know, start something new? Is there somebody that's going to take the mantle as like that dude? We thought it was going to be Giannis. Um, unfortunately, he just either is getting hurt and banged up, or that team is 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 older than than we you know think. Giannis is still relatively young, but he's got a lot of miles, and that team is around him. Is, that is many older. miles on him? He just keep getting hurt. Well, it's because he's doing everything on the court. It's like, well, his game, his game is 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 privy to his athletic ability. Yeah, right? it's his it's length, that's athletic tough. ability, and skill set with that with that size that makes him so unique. But that's why he has the ball so much, and it's like he's running, he's jumping, he's doing so much, like. You know, and that's something to think, like, you think court time and, like, what is a player doing during court time and what is that, you know, wear and tear? What's the difference of the wear and tears you get? A guy that is so ball dominant and has the ball in his hand so much of the time and then is also banging and being one of the main primary rebounders, like, that's a lot of that's a lot of wear and tear on the body. So it, it, it builds up faster, I think, for Giannis than we might realize. And so, like, he could have a much faster decline potentially in his game because – Unless he starts learning how to hit jumpers, you know, get a cold mid-range game. Uh, all right, let's get to some irregular internet. Uh, irregular internet here, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, a woman is seen being scuffled with by an employee at a gas station market, and all hell breaks loose. I haven't had you are so convinced! Oh, I'm a Lady, get out of the store. Get out! Don't touch me! Don't swing at me again! Get out! You don't put your hand on me! You swung at you me! Put your hand on me! You put your hand on me! 
I'm, I'm, I'm right here. And she just shit on my floor. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, first she dropped <laughs> AirPods, the AirPod case. And then she she shook out a Why neck. Why she shake out a heart? Shit like that. With all the medication she's taking. <laughs> oh my God, Jared, what do you be watching, man? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you you lost on the internet, my man. You might need an intervention. Uh, yeah. Oh, in boxing right, news, uh, Tyson Fury got uh, uh, lost to Alexander Usyk in a split decision. Uh, an upset win, some say. Tyson Fury had the war to blame for his loss. <laughs> I believe I won that fight. I believe he won a few of the rounds, but I won majority of them. And I believe it was, uh, what can you do, one of them tough things, the decisions in boxing. Um, we both put on a good fight, best we could do. And, you know, his country's at war. So people are siding with the country at war. But make no mistake, I won that fight, in my opinion. And I'll be back. I've got a rematch clause. You know... I thank Jesus for all the victories he's given me. I've had a split decision lot for the good little man, and I thank him again. In the mighty name of Jesus, we go back home to our families, and we run it back in October. Good luck to Alexander. Well done. God bless you. Happy New Year! <laughs> oh, Happy New Year? I don't know. That, nigga, that nigga was knocked so crazy, you think it's... <laughs> It's January. It's January 1st. January. It's a gun game for choice. <laughs> Give him he, two talk, I, he he talked about he think he wanted to fight. I'm like, man, I don't think you you even thinking. I don't think you got any brain cells working right now. No, no electrical connection in his head. God damn it! No, he won't. Um. Uh, what else? Uh, all right. Well, uh, in other news, uh, a large woman on a plane, a plus size model, uh, had an altercation with a very rude man about her sitting next to him on a plane. Here's what happened. It's a confrontation on a plane between two passengers who were sitting next to each other. You know nothing about me by the size of my body. It happened on an American Airlines flight from Dallas to L.A. Natalie Haig, who is a plus-size model, says she immediately realized there'd be a problem with the passenger sitting next to her. Yeah. What? As soon as I walk on the plane, I was met with this person that was just disgusted by the fact that I existed next to him. Understandable. Natalie says as they waited right. for takeoff, she noticed right. the guy was sending out a text to a friend. So Natalie decided to fight back, snapping this photo and sharing it with her 100,000 followers on Instagram. His friend writes, hopefully she didn't eat any Mexican food, to which the passenger replied, I think she ate a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> the fucked up people in this world, man. It's a fucked up people in this world. <laughs> it's just assholes. This fucked up people in this I said stop putting the women. I didn't say it's insulting. <laughs> stop Pedro, giving, stop giving credit. Said, he just said stop putting them on the pedestal. He didn't say he didn't little. say be yeah. a little them more. <laughs> a little bit woman. Well, she's a pretty, she's a pretty girl. Yeah, but she's a pretty girl. Just, This was gonna say this, man. I, I hope I hope her hundred plus followers saw that and just give him hell on social media. Uh Cutty Corner shout outs, Cutty Corner shout outs, Cutty Corner shout outs is the segment yeah, is the segment in the show where everyone gets a chance to rank a plate or highlights on the positive in the world. Cutty Corner shout outs, Cutty Corner shout outs. It's 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 Aaron, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? I do, I do. Uh, mine's is a is a is a happy Cutty Corner shout out. Uh, my favorite Premier League team, the team that I, I'm kind of down with uh, and always been following throughout the years. Man City won a won a fourth straight Premier League title today. They won it. They got to celebrate. They got the Hoister Trophy. Uh, I'm happy. Four four straight. First Premier League team to win four straight. Uh, first time that um, 
I've actually won six in the last seven years. <laughs> Something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah, they got six. Yeah, no, I'm right. Six in the last seven years. They won two, then Liverpool won one, and then they won four straight. Uh, I'm a happy man. You, they, they got this dominance thing going on. But the Premier League needs a playoff. Let's just be real. Because other years they dominated. They won it in a dominating fashion. This year they didn't. This year they dominated everybody they should. Problem is that the the two, three, and fourth place team, they did not beat one time this year. They drew one. I think they they drew twice with one of them. They drew one and lost one with the other two. So you're telling me, like, dude, they you should have to play to win. You should have to beat those teams at the end. If see the Premier League, for those that don't know, the way they do it is there's 20 teams. You play each team twice. So you play uh 38 games, whatever it is. You play each team twice. Yeah, 38 games. You play each team twice, and whoever has the best record wins the whole thing. The problem is they need to play off because the schedule makers never schedule like the best teams playing each other the last week. They never do that. They always end up being like, so when it does come down to the last day, it came down last day today, Man City had to win because they were two points ahead of the team in second place. So they had to win to win it. But they both were playing nobodies. Both both teams were playing weaker teams that both won. It happened so many times that it's just like not once in the Premier League's history have it came down to the last day uh, with the two teams playing each other. Not one time. Uh, there's been only a handful of times where it's come down to the last day. But like you said, usually and usually the team that won it was playing a nobody. I mean, the first one that Man City ever won, it was a miracle. They had to come back with like minutes left down two goals they scored three goals against qpr to win it but you know like i said they weren't playing the team in second place that was holding on to the win so it's a good happy shout out shout out but i wish they had a playoff i would like to see a playoff they i don't think english people they need to stop being so set in their ways turn around they'll it's exciting they'll make a, a lot of money you don't have to include all teams just do like college football did college football was smart when they had four teams when you just have the four top teams playing, guess what? You're not gonna get it. wasn't It wasn't a chance for like some wild card team to sneak in there. Nope, it's the four top teams. So whoever won, you were happy with because you're like, hey, at least they're one of the best. Uh, Pietro, do you have a cutty corner shout out? Uh, yeah, not really. Uh, just want to give one to Wade Phillips and Bob Suits for coaching the XFL or the UFL. <laughs> Or whatever the hell this is, how did these two men fall from greatness this fast? Nepotism, because Wade Phillips should have still been defensive coordinator of Rams. That maybe they would have, maybe they would have beat after what he did with that defense. To uh, to basically, to basically what he did with that defense to Tom Brady in that Super Bowl, he should have got another job off of that. He should have got a job off of that. He didn't get it off. It didn't matter. I was happy with him being the Rams defensive coordinator. But then Sean LeVay fired him to hire that dude. What was that dude? Phillips, the one that coached the Chargers last year? Mm-hmm. He, oh, he Stan, fought, Staley? Stan, Staley. Brandon Staley. Staley. He fired. He he forced them out when the defense was number one under Wade Phillips. They were number one. He forced them out. Staley had became defense coordinator for one year. He was like assistant under Wade Phillips. Came defense coordinator for one year. Defense dropped. Dropped to like fourth in the league. But everyone's like, oh, man, see what he did with that Rams defense. One year being defense coordinator job, Staley gets the charger job. Can't coach for shit. My Cutty Corner shout out goes out to Dylon Dilly. My boy Dylon. Yeah, the five greatest rappers of all time. Dylon. About a month ago, he came out and blamed the Dave Chappelle skit of making the band um, as ruining his career i think it also effectively helped ruin diddy as a continued music producer i think his i think it was his it was the start of his he became a parody of himself and then doing that stupid ass making the band stuff and um yeah he was losing his grips on the hip-hop game and you know he's, he's i think it was, i think i think it affected a couple people but dylon i don't know that it affected you in the way that you tried to claim because uh i found a clip this week uh, what the hell you were doing on that goddamn show? And well, damn, Dylon Dilly. Satisfied not only for myself but for them. 
Them tried to crucify me and put me upon the crosses. Move aside, soldiers, let me talk to your bosses. All the while me fight 40, win no losses. Now I'm on the mic, 40 bar, no flosses. Post. We can chill, girl, let's stop playing. You need to come home with me. You will just be in there forever. You will die in that You have to listen. Right at this time, Dylan's really not on a lot of songs. I'm telling you exactly how to do it. That's been because of him, because of his lack of focus and also his stubbornness. You're not listening when you're going like, we can't. And I know that that's what you do for yourself, but we got to do it different right now. You need to come home with me. You crazy. I'm telling you how to do it, and you keep on just doing it your way. Your shit is so... <laughs> That line is a wild boy, man. He might be extra sometimes to people. He ain't got no melodies in it, he just runs. When your part come on, it sound like another record to me right now. What I'm saying right now, don't try to water me down and change my style. You too close. <laughs> it's just like, can I just be, can I just do everything I heard growing up in, in a worse way? <laughs> Dude, he was, he was so bad, man. That's my thing when he came out trying to play that show. I'm like, dude, I remember it. he was bad. He was not good. Me and Barsha used to have a good time watching that show. <laughs> yeah. I never watched one episode. I'm trying to think that out. Yeah, I think it was hard. What was the making? Because all they did was fight. That's why Marshawn loved it. He was like, man, turn on making the fan, man. And we can yeah. watch them fight. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, but shout out to Dylan Dilly. You almost had us fooled for all the people who never saw the real show. And many of us who had forgotten some of your antics. Um, I'm just glad the regular internet algorithm got that back into my feed so I could see that and, you know, not feel bad for you anymore because <laughs> you, you, I remember specifically, they're like, this fool don't listen to us when we try to get him to sing it one way. He always try you can't, yeah, I'm the five greatest rappers of all time. You can't change my style. I spit on fire. I'm pretty sure he did say I spit on fire. Though. three i got a great way for you to uh reverse your hairline <laughs> come on dude come on pedro I'm... you can get this haircut too no reverse my yeah, hairline's on. all but up and gone but my barber said hold on something i want to try with you I'm about to get you right Instead of fading to the bike We gon' hit him with something new Fade it to the front <laughs> Everything gon' work out fine Fade it to the front I know you fucking love Fade it to the front Wear are reversing your hairline Fade it to the front I know you fucking love Man, Jared, I got nothing. You need Brandon for that one. You need Brandon for that one. No, Brandon got a great hairline. Man, I ain't going to pay a barber to fade it to the back front. Man, I, look, man, I don't even know what to say. Hey, man, the back of your head can be looking tight. You get some waves in back there, too. <laughs> look like I'll be looking like a bad version of a Shaolin monk. <laughs> it's like, well, that's a coon monk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, I look bad. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, man, you get a little, let the back grow out a little bit, get a little S curl in there. You, be, you got a little on, shag man. on the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to see, hey, what if so I have to kind of go flat top the back of it, too? <laughs> man, I just love the flat top. How about you give me a flat top, a high top fade in the back? Dude, I'm telling you, man, that 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 that's ingenious, man. There's gonna be a whole new level of haircuts on the <laughs> faded to the front <laughs> hairstyles. Uh, uh, in other irregular internet, uh, Drake, uh, 
is really for the culture. There's somebody that I was like, I used to see out and be like, yo, that's that nigga, you know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing, he opened for Jay. You know, he had records, he was killing them. He worked with Pharrell, he worked with the Clips. There's somebody that I was like, I used to see out and be like, yo, that's that nigga, you know what I'm saying? No, he said it with a hard R. <laughs> it was a young Drake trying to spit game and talk about some ninjas. <laughs> Ninjers, he knew. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> They're not like us. They're not like us. <laughs> it is not like us. Nigga, please.